Oh. And there, we are saddled with a, f- a funeral. Yeah. Uh, that's the demise of my Your brother. See, uh, that concentration, the focus on uh, ordinarily me wo. Le, me follow uh, as I see radio interview. No. Okay. Uh, we could say Even though me who advert, no. Mm-hmm. But I know the, the presence of mind wasn't there. To me, see under we see. So now we cry now. It accepts we are to your platform, no da. And you be surprised, no da. I haven't had the time to scan the thing or even scrutinize it. Oh, okay. But because it is to your platform, let me check and cry. Let me read some news items, you know. Then I realize I, I really met something. Indeed, uh, Professor Kuku uh, Azar. Kuku Azar. Yes. Uh, I'm not calling my attention to it before I will cry. Okay. Messenger. Unfortunately, you put it on the platform. Uh, I don't think we we'll waste too much time, but you know what? Or can basically, or have to my testimony at the NRC no, mm. was untrue, false. Yeah, and then there was an attribution to Ben Epson as well. The, virtually, they lied. Yeah. And that in the process, and I tried to get Ben into a conspiracy mm-hmm. also to go and lie. Am I accurate? Chapter yes. Accurate, fair yeah. interpretation. Now, Kwame, ma, look at the NRC report, waha, the volume one, chapter five, equal page 146. Let me read my, what summarize I summarize it. Okay, thank God it's a summary. Yes. But you have to have patience, otherwise you shouldn't have made us discuss this man. I wasn't making you Maybe discuss, I was just asking your opinion. Oh, oh, he said, okay, and then uh, Kabila and Sampai won't come. Uh-huh. Yeah, what was man? Okay, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> to you. Yes. Paragraph 5.7 5.7 of the 5.7. Okay, this is NRC talking. Mm-hmm. Two respected journalists, Kweku Baku Jr. and Ben Epson, who we freed out and George Jr. can listen to know. Testified before the commission that during the trial they had the opportunity of examining some of the accused persons as to the nature and extent of their injuries. Kwegu Baku Jr. said, quote, Mauli Goka, who was the first accused on the charge sheet, had had the tip of his penis split open slightly, he said, by a certain object. So it was bigger than normal, and we are all men, so we know how it is. But obviously, it was bigger. His penis appeared to have been touched, that is, bent. He suggested, he told me that there was something like cotton, that is, Maoli telling me, like a candle. It looked that way, and it never really extinguishes. I mean, it doesn't burn out. That was what was used in touching his penis. The tip also was opened by a certain object and he wasn't sure what it was. With regard to Ata Kululu, Buama Penny, he also had a similar experience. The tip of his penis had also been split open slightly bigger than all of us had he there. He hadn't had his, his touched, but it kept on leaking off and on. So most times he was in cloth instead of wearing pants. According to him, any time he wore pants, the object touched the pants and he felt some pains. Chiremejan had his back had had his back cut. I saw it with my own eyes. According to him, his back was cut and the flesh was given to him to chew. He refused. He shouted, quote, my back is being cut, my back is being cut. He said he wouldn't eat it. The flesh then was given to Mauli Goka to chew. He also refused. Warrant Officer Foro, his back had been cut. I just couldn't believe it. Some tribal marks had been made made at his back. So many of them, so many of them, I just couldn't understand the rationale. This 
is the summary of my attribution relative to the Gokes. Now a national reconciliation. And the national reconciliation. And they have captured it in the form in the summary form here. Mm -hmm. Now listen to Ben Epson. I went there before Ben Epson. Okay. Ben Epson also said, Chairman Jan showed me his back. The left should don't forget Ben was not in prison. No. He was reporting for From BBC and West Africa mm -hmm. in the court. We were in prison with these guys and they go in and out and come back to tell us what was happening at the proceedings. Now Ben Epson says this Chairman Jan showed me his back, the left shoulder blade. There was a palm sized cut and he told me they had used hot metal to cut the flesh and they asked Mauli to chew. I asked Mauli and he confirmed it. Mauli also on rest showed me his male organ which had been slit and he said they had tried to pull it out. W.O. Aforo also showed me the hand which he said had tied at the, had been tied at the table and had used they had used it as a target practice. Then Atapeni, who was also in cloth at the tribunal, opened and showed me what was left of his genitor. It looked like a male organ. It looked like the male organ and the testicles had been lumped together, like, pardon me, my want of better use the word grilled, because there was always pus coming out. Ben was there. It appears there was a memory deficit relative to Mr. Rawlings' recollection, because what kind of it that my Ben didn't go there? Mm -hmm. uh, even if Ben went there, Ben did not corroborate what I had said. But I mean, between these two summaries, uh, is there any vast difference? No. Yes. So Mr. Rawlings got it all wrong. I'll be prepared to forgive him because we need on your Fraba and Nyami P may be on his mind. And then now is how many years ago? 2003. Yes. So it is possible there in his recollection. He didn't get everything right. But before I end, Kwame, T, the same NRC report, what they did when they were dealing with the Goka Chairman Jan aspect, the NRC yes, actually FM. assessed the tribunal records. Mm -hmm. In terms of the tribunal, not try home. Yeah. So the NRC assessed those records. And let me refresh a month for memory, Kakra. Okay? In the evidence of Goka, this is I'm quoting from the NRC thing, except yeah. mm -hmm. not the whole thing. I say, uh, that's Maoli Goka. Maoli's point in America. No? We eventually got to a destination. This is a statement he had issued to the security agencies who were investigating them. Yeah. This statement is Nyama. And also, we eventually got to the des a destination where we were told to get down from the truck. Chairman and I were separated. I was told to stand after being sent some, somewhere, then shots were fired all around me. I was sent into a room where I was instructed to sit on the floor, and they started beating me with what appeared to be a barbed wire because I could feel it pricking me. The beating went on for about an hour. Then I felt Shreme had been brought into the room because I heard his voice. I was told to remove my shirt so that my handcuffs were opened. I removed my shirt and I sat down. Later, I was told to open my mouth and something that tasted like meat, raw meat, was put into my mouth. Prior to this, Shreme was shouting that his back was being cut. After that, I was given something to drink and it tasted and smelled like a urine. I was kicked in the abdomen. My private part was bent in the process. I lost control of myself and urinated. Chairman and I were told to leak the urine, which we did. My private part was taken and the tip of it was slashed to make it longer. Did you hear that? Yeah. We were dragged from the truck and sent into a hole. And then we were told to say our last prayers and I recited Psalm 23 aloud. We were then fired above our heads. This is him, Chairman. Uh, Mauli. Mauli. They told us, and I told the commission, I mean, the time they were arrested, I was in prison. Do you understand? Yeah. So I said that, look, what I was going to say were things they told us. And also the scars of the torture were things I saw with my eyes. What I couldn't tell them was where, who <coughs> and who were torturing them, except what they told me. And they mentioned Jack Bigley. They mentioned my own, own close good friend who also died in a very mysterious way. 
James Kwashi. He was the son of a former trade minister in the Second Republic. He was a journalist too. Yeah. Uh -huh. He they implicated. When I came out from jail, I confronted him. He says, look, Kuku, I was there. But you look at me. I'm an intellectual. I'm a journalist. I couldn't have taken But He had become a member of the 64 Infantry Regiment. Mm -hmm. and he he con considered he was present, but he didn't take part. But of course, it made him, in a way, accessory. You know, he died mysteriously yeah. subsequently. Our, his story will be told one day. Then, of course, they mentioned Tony Beho, yeah. who was also a close friend of mine, but he was in sec security, very close to Rawlings. Mm -hmm. We all know what happened to Tony Beho, too. Yeah. Subsequently, so, his house sure. became a target of arson. As him perpetrated by his own friends, okay. Tony Behutu was implicated, but they made the point that Tony would always come there, observe things without touching anybody. And when I asked Tony, he agreed that yes, the torture took place, and the torture used to take place for former IGP resident near the American embassy. Sister, sister, we, what I back to IGP. IGP, yeah. Yes. Tama Yisu Sayin in the Honoya IGP official IGP. residence. They turned that place into a den for the commandos. The police commandos and the military commandos assist four boys quite a lot of them i knew as friends we, we grew up together and things many more we're only different in terms of the political orientation mm. now this is what uh maoli said i could stop here because it's enough but they want to teach him john i say i was beaten up with what felt like a barbed wire something like an iron rod and the butt of a gun from all angles then when this had ceased after 15 minutes or so or somebody just said this is the beginning of what is in store for you if you don't admit it the following they had done some list of names for them huh? yeah. that will implicate those people now one cut that one away yeah you know not here so when i recovered i heard mauli crying from beatings Somebody else said I had been very difficult and almost immediately I felt my back being cut and I shouted, oh God, my back being cut, my back is being cut. It was put into my mouth with the orders that I should chew my own flesh. I spat it off. Let me say, yeah. I spat it out. Yes. After asking me to lick something from the floor, something that tasted like urine, I was sent back into the vehicle together with Maui. It's on and on and on. Huh? See, you're, you're a, uh, somewhere, one my opinion. Also, mm -hmm. they started hitting me with things like iron, sticks and barbed wire on my joints. And this was done for about 30 minutes. I was beaten with an object like a barbed wire and some hot metal plate being used on my body and something like a knife being used in cutting my chest. My nails were removed from my fingers and toes. My penis was lashed. And I shouted for a while, and I heard somebody something being pushed down my throat. I felt something like a lighter to bend the penis, and I felt the tip being slashed. Then something like a needle being pushed into it. I urinated and eased myself. This is Jimmy. This no, this is uh, Buama. Buama pain. pain. Yes, there's many more, and these are people we met face to face. I mean, we were in the same cells with them underground. Of all, I could say what. Mm -hmm. Ford, no, no, you're underground. Honey, I mean, Kusi Prat, I could do one power. No, Ralph Kubi, he was an ACDR member. Mm -hmm. How they mix them up with us is another interesting story when they will be told. But he was with us, and together with a uh, Charles Taylor, the Liberian president. From yes, no, you're so mate. Oh, yes, yes. On with their bottom. I'm sorry. They were on. <laughs> oh, no, no, we oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but of course, that it means I had a company. You know? <laughs> oh, no. We got quite close. <laughs> go come. He yeah. was there with the Gokas, the chairman. Jans. They were about seven or eight. Now, mm. what they here for? No, Kokan, yeah, 11. Mm -hmm. Very small place. Place that would have been okay for about Nimpa four or five. But we, we were able to share uh, the place all right. Actually, no, we uh, was was separating here uh, to different places. We see Prating went to Navrongo, I go to Ampa in Saum, myself, uh, Kitekrachi, uh, Raf. I've forgotten where they took Raf. You know, I've lost touch with him. No, into Kwame. Basically, Mr. Rawlings, I'm prepared to be charitable and say they be a near recollection, no, a limited and uh, down. But 
I say soldier four in your done because we are professionals. Yeah. But a I was done by soldiers and police people. Yeah. That we please so called commandos or police panthers or somebody. Ne, on our sixty four infantry boys. No. One away at the Miami. They were soldiers. Yeah. Emma Mitchell. In the, uh, really, I'm surprised. Uh, also, true book. We can't wait for it. Just like we can't wait for yours. Yes. And Mr. Rollins, uh, I watch her for some time now. It's, it's not my focus. And right now, Kwakwami, he shouldn't be the focus. Yeah, of six months to elections. Huh? And Mr. Rollins intrudes himself. As for the journalism, the journalist who interviewed him is fantastic. Make no mistake. Yep. Every journalist, damn good journalist, would look for that opportunity. It was fantastic for the radio station as well as uh, for Kwisi, uh, Kwisi Sechado himself. Of course, Kwisi, Kwisi is too experienced. Why interview yeah. big, 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 big people all over the world? But he's always wanted this interview. Yes, it, that's not what I'm questioning. It's fantastic. I would love to have that kind of opportunity. But on or oh, yeah, interview, you know, uh, maybe you should have reflected a bit and know there in Sembi or Bakano will necessarily provoke reactions and those reactions in Okwami, I can tell you you will not be happy with them. Final one. Yeah. The Air Force states in executions, extrajudicial executions. Yeah. Was one of my the letters of my testimony at the NRC. Eventually check I there Riyadh considered that he made he did those frameworks. Yeah Riyadh, for me. Riyadh was Yen that Yen he even claimed there he was doing it on behalf of the state mm-hmm. ordered by the government of the day because you know, there were people man, one classic example be there today could you lead i mean mm-hmm. people didn't believe that rollins could sit by and have could you lead executed yeah because of how close they were i mean to be honest with you even though some of us were in jail uh, we would yet to be here I mean, especially execution. Don't forget when they are executed, the prison officers are involved in the burial processes and all those things. Yeah. Uh-huh. The truth is that he was genuinely executed. Yeah. It, it is not true he, he found a way for him to run out to Cuba or elsewhere. It's also not true that uh, what, what the cement in the Yamashisha no corner will call, call aircraft, eh? Uh, what the helicopter call sea. Uh, the, that's also not true, you know. But the point really is that Riyadh confirmed that he did those for me yeah and he had them except the and also what the mass did now a kind of rollings no we inviting it 13 times one of the opportunities uh, invitations and it was for him to come and cross examine me he same said, with riyadh because it's not the aqua county now after one week they gave him the opportunity 13 times with different people like uh, uh, squadron leader tego munia one cop Riyadh, I think, went for that Dabuga one. He crosses, I mean, if I recollect he correctly, yeah. mm-hmm. Riyadh crosses, I mean, at Dabuga. I mean, Riyadh didn't cross examine me. He had the opportunity. He was given a date every time to come and confront me. He came out with a bizarre story there. What did I mean about Chijan Mu? He had plot to assassinate him. So, Ba. Sebakaya. Down in a rolling scene. What by assassinate him? Or yeah. Can you believe that? So he lost the opportunity to subject me to cross examination. Indeed, I was waiting so anxiously because that did not bear drama. Oh, ma'am, I catch the NRC. There, there are few things I was holding on to because now I promised them more about NRC. So I wanted them to come and tell their own story. Of course, some came, some didn't come. Into what I mean? I some other honey there. Rollins, when he appeared under subpoena. Okay. He didn't go there willingly. Just someone said Yes, he rejected 13 invitations for him to come and testify, uh, cross examine people or even give his testimony. He rejected them. I didn't know he was that much of a coward. Minim Donna or a coward, Kakramu, Minim. But Namijine of Oko NRS, no Akokasa. Kwame Okoeno, no, we hear two things from him, Sabakaya. They wanted a Mate Kui tape and the extrajudicial execution video from the air force uh, at the air force base yeah what did he tell the world he told the tete tete w tete who had died and gone now strictly speaking those materials and it should have been in uh, security archives yeah national security archives or yes something for the head of state of the day no yes something for w tete in see or banned na dinu ko dru tete ho in see tete we couldn't find well i thought that was of doubtful uh, validity 
the truth is that they couldn't afford to let the NRC assess those two things. They couldn't. Tape in the car. Damn tape in the Kujoyanka as uh, editor of the People's Daily Graphic. Okobo, transcribe. Or, or transcribe the year story and where they ended up taking the job away from him. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So please, Mr. Rollins, I had taken a very conscious decision that my focus on you will be reflected in the book that I'm writing. And that that's all. He was no longer of any serious relevance and significance to contemporary Ghanaian politics, as far as I'm concerned. Why energy? We move on. Kind of a historical recollection. And that's why I put my mind. And it's been so for the last four or five years. Occasionally, we are not in this case. But the focus, Sabakaya, consistent, sustained, persistent focus I had for him, I decided that, look, put these things in a book form and let's move on. But if he is going to have opportunities like this unique one that he got from Asasi FM, and he won't tell the truth, and he won't show remorse, and he will peddle lies about people, well, some of us, by the grace of God, are still alive. And Kwame Safaka has a platform like this, and I know he will come and he will provoke me to actually <laughs> make a submission. And I will <laughs> gladly oblige him. <laughs> I, my case. I didn't provoke you. It's on the front page of Kwesi Pratt's newspaper. Mm. And uh, maybe so. Okay. But obviously, maybe so. I said, I want to just tell you, I want no more reward you. Oh, now, only <coughs> there is a prison economy. There is nothing you can't find in the prisons that is outside. <laughs> Eh, we call that perverse la, economy. Ila, ila, la. Prison <laughs> is, uh, is uh, quite a friend of microcosm of uh, a microcosm of of the society. My boss, short, so Underground, uh, of the perverse economy. Everything is there. <laughs> eh? Everything is there. I don't want to say uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, everything. Maybe yeah, yeah, our because it's a reflection of our society the corruption is there everything everything eh? discrimination no, no, it's is it's there all, it's all right bibi awo it's all right yes this fm 104.3 would you mean